All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Pars Custom Corner. Uh, today we're looking at Toho Project, submitted to us by uh, Discord user Earth, Weeb, and Fire. And uh, my special guest for today is Mr. Paddywagon. Hi, Paru. Yeah, I'm Paddywagon. Um, people might know me most from my almanac resource for Weiss that collects uh, articles and um, video content that people have made about the game that I like and care about. But um, Par knows me because we're both uh, in Texas Weiss, and uh, we both like custom car design. Um, so that's why I'm going to have a lot of fun on this uh, video. Yes, and I am I'm happy to have him today. We are doing... So since we're doing Toho Project, and that's kind of like the thing that I know more about than any other subject on Earth. I decided I could be the lore master for this one and uh, take Paddy Wagon along with me as we read through the cards. All yeah, right. that's a big relief because I recognize <laughs> maybe two of these characters. That's okay. Um, that's I'll all... point them out as they go. Sure. It probably won't be a surprise which I recognize. I'll probably just recognize... Um, the, the two main characters? But... Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> all right. Let's just start on uh, our first card here. I'll have you read out the first one, actually. Uh, sure. So this first one is uh, Enormous Strength, Yugi. Hoshiguma. Hoshiguma. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. This is an Oni. Yes. Uh, who maybe is pretty good. This is a full field early play, uh, level three. And when it's placed on stage from hand, it gets 4,500 power uh, and the falling ability to the end of the opponent's next turn. That uh, during this card's battle, all players can't play backups from hand. So it's a 13 5 cross turn, the turn it's played. And has another effect that when it's card's battle, when this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, you can pay the cost of two stock. And if you do, put that reversed character on top of the opponent's deck. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. I think this card's really um, good. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe strong out of the gate, but this is one of my favorite cards. Uh, in the set, for a couple reasons, like I think uh, this kind of condition with this kind of effect is really cool. I find it really frustrating for this profile to be on more limited conditions, like the two or less ones in Kaguya. Yeah, um, because you really want to be able to respond with this to whatever, whenever the opponent plays their threats, you want to be able to respond to it, and it's frustrating if your deck state isn't right. So I think that's. Those, th this condition and this effect just make a lot of sense to go together, and removing something is really good. R removing uh, something. I'm not sure about the balance though. Balance wise, uh, yeah. So it's statted correctly, right? Because it's the Sayaka. This is Sayaka's power line from Madoka. Uh, mm -hmm. She's also a four more early play with the 4500 power effect. Uh, I don't know about the pay to top deck. Yeah. But it might be fine, exactly. actually. Um, I think it might be fine. Maybe, um, like, if if anything, put like if you have two or more other fantasy characters, you may do that. Like, if I, the only kind of like balancing I could see adding to that would be just putting like some kind of trait restriction on it. Sure, I think part of that there is old there are old cards that just get this effect for free the turn it's played. Uh, okay, like as in you don't pay stock. And it costs 500 power the turn it's played. Oh, okay. Um, so that would leave it the same power. But I think part of the charm with this is the ability to have cross turn oh, yeah. uh, top deck potential. I think that's pretty cool. And there is no card like that that exists. So budgeting is kind of hard. But I think two stock almost. But I think you're right. You want to put a field condition on it uh, or something. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I think it's, it might be about right or it might be. If it's off, it's not that far off. Um, I'd say it's a. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. What's the new? What's a neutral? For Our neutrals that, the tilde. Sure. It's the tilde. Oh yeah. great, great. I'll do the I'll do the tilde because I'm I'm. It may be, if it's wrong, it's not off by that wrong. And right. I, I'll go with your B plus rating. Is this uh, flavorful, Paro? Right. So something I forgot to do in every single one of these videos so far is explain the series that we're looking at real quick. 
Toho Project is a series focusing around a few characters who just they hang out and they live in this world called Gensokyo. In that world, it's everything that people have stopped believing in in the real world exists. So they have like monsters and iPhone ones, and uh, so, so everyone is either a yokai or a person, a human. Uh, so here we have an oni. She's very physically strong. Not really known for her um, bullet shooting abilities, as that is like kind of the core gameplay of the Toho games. I think if we're looking at someone who can just, you know, beat the physical shit out of you. I mean, this is Hulk, right? This is Hulk from Marvel. This is pretty much as sure. like, this is pretty much as good as it gets for that kind of, uh, for that character build, you know? So I think this is flavorful. Yeah, I think, I think, sure. Uh, do you want me to follow your lead on the flavor or will i just not put anything <laughs> so for when oliver was doing assassin's creed with me uh i i think we agreed on everything he would explain to me what he thought the flavor was and then sure. I, I usually just ah, agreed with him it. yeah yeah okay. exactly well uh, i, th I think I'll actually we did disagree on one card where he thought it was not flavorful and i thought it could be interestingly well. enough okay We'll say if I strongly agree, I'm going to bother putting in a rating. But sure. uh, you might just assume I'm not going to put anything down and just say, yeah, what Paru said. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, let's look at our... Oops, sorry. Let's look at our first Climax combo. We have Master Spark, Marissa. Uh, this card gets 500 power for each of your other fantasy trait characters. When she's played on stage from hand, drop the two. Choose a card in hand, put it into waiting room. So it's on play, draw two, ditch one. Climax combo. Uh, let's see. When this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, you may pay the cost, which is paying for discarding three cards and putting Master Spark from Climax area into waiting room. Master Spark being a shot Climax. Oh. And if you do, choose up to four cards in your opponent's waiting room, put them on top of the deck, and then deal five, uh, deal six to your opponent. So it's like a it's like a supercharged version of the um the Toka from Data Live. I actually think that this is it's literally Toka, right? Toka was pay three ditch two. So yeah, he's he's like... just uh he's done pay four ditch three and cranked up the numbers here, which makes sense, I think. Yeah. I think that does make sense. Um It definitely makes sense for <clears throat> for whatever reason, Bushy Road sees more higher damage numbers as deserving <laughs> deserving more stock and hand and costs yeah. that like higher damage is better even to the point that like Bushro considers burn five a better number to deal damage for than like burn two which is kind of funny it, yeah um, interestingly like, people like us who are familiar with the game <laughs> um so like the six definitely i'm on board with that even though it's kind of odd for us uh who know that maybe six is often not an attractive number to burn for like Bush Roads on board. I think you're right that top decking four and then burn six might actually be totally fine with Bush Road math. So this is actually um, a probably good uh, adjustment up. I think that makes sense. The numbers probably work. So I do kind of like know about future cards in the set. And I know that they don't okay. have, um, they don't have decompression. Uh, I, like the set doesn't have any method of decompression, so this oh, really? is there's no shuffle back. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any that. shuffle back. <laughs> I don't think there's any stock swap. So this is like, th if, if that is true, this is your only form of like getting around a compressed deck, I guess. And my biggest issue with this combo, or this type of combo in general, like we've seen it in Data Live and uh, what is the other one, Princess Connect. Is uh you could everything could go right for you. You could stack the four cards on top of your opponent's deck, and then they just cancel on five. Yeah, and it's like wow. So I've committed my climax slot to do nothing. Yeah, I did. I have a lot of experience with that with the uh, fate laser for sure. Oh yeah, using the to uh, uh, sorry the the Tosaka stack yeah, a bunch of definitely. cards on top, and Which then in some ways yeah. it's pretty similar. So that that suggests that your strength rating you're going to say is this isn't that good. I don't think this combo is very good at all, actually. And yeah. it's on shot trigger, 
it being on a, yeah. it being which on a is shot, not it? great. Uh, it does cantrip at least. It does require hand, so that is helpful for the card. Flavor wise, I actually think there was a huge missed opportunity here because this same character, this is this is like their standard kind of attack. They have another one right. called Final Spark, which is like right. the, big, the big the big ending one. Finalis Funklin. Funklin. Yeah, Finalis Funklin from League of Legends copied the attack from this yes. character. And so you'd think that maybe for this kind of effect, you, it's like the most minor thing ever, right? But maybe go for Final Spark instead of Master Spark if you're having an all-in climax combo like this. Just for that, I'm giving this, I'm giving this the minus for flavor. Mm, I see. The missed opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. I missed opportunity. I see. Um, it would probably wouldn't even take that much effort to retrofit this. Nope, just as, change the name. Change the name, I'll right. give you the plus. It, they even it even correctly happens on reverse or end of attack, which yeah. would reflect well on this being the last attack. And yeah, I, I agree with you. Cool. Let's look at our next one here. This is on you. This is Dragon Eater Himemushi Momoyo, uh, level three. When it attacks. Uh, you can pay one to get Twin Drive. And uh, up to once per turn during the turn of this card is placed on stage from hand um, Musashi Burn. So on cancel, mill the top burn for that milled card plus one. Uh, this seems like a great uncommon level three. <laughs> this is a great un... Wait, there was no rares? Wait, this is a double R. Oh, I see what yeah, you're I'm, saying. I'm just joking. I see what hey, you're this saying. This seems like the kind of pretty simple design that bush road likes to put on level threes but i think this is actually like power level uh i i like it a lot <laughs> like it's like i i get i got excited reading this uh when i saw that we have a shot combo on the second card and then we have this third card Ooh. that like makes you imagine uh twin driving into multiple shots <laughs> that would be Especially pretty sick just, yeah if only this were a little bigger, because then you could try to play for like a two-turn thing of of it lives maybe with a backup, and then you twin drive again on a second turn at level three to try to dig into shots. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think though my memory might be outdated by now, but the level two or the level three combo we just saw, the Marissa is the only shot in the set. Yes. So that stupid dream isn't really a thing. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, this seems fine, um, especially because you don't want you don't have a lot of other stock maybe to spend if you're gonna resources and stock to spend if you want to do the Marissa thing. Yeah, like if you're playing the if you chose to play the Marissa level three, I think this is definitely like your second and third character. Yeah, that makes sense. And twin driving into the shot, you know, it's, as infrequently as it's going to happen, it's going to feel really cool. So twin drive as a flavor effect has a lot of potential because uh like fate puts it on the dual wielding archers a lot to yeah. reflect his double he has holding two swords does this dragon eater do something like that so unfortunately this character is from the most recent game i think which i have not played uh all i know about them is that they are they're like a centipede character actually so that could be it you know they got a lot of legs but then you'd think maybe we'd be triggering a hundred times. Uh, and the, I'm looking at their power on the... I have the wiki open, just in case this happens. Their power is eating, being able to eat dragons. And I don't know how you would ever convert that into a Weiss Schwartz uh, flavor effect. So, you know, I'm going to give them the plus. I'm going to say lots of legs, okay. extra trigger. That is my justification for that. Sounds good. Cool. Let's look at our next Our one. next card is an Alice. Yes. This I this is a doll maker, Alice Margatroid. Uh when your other character's battle opponent becomes reversed, choose a fantasy character, and it gets five hundred power until the end of the turn. And then it is a pay one rest self salvage brainstorm for fantasy trait. This is uh this is Darth Vader. No, it's not. This is rolling power. 
I forgot who this is, but this exists. Um, Ruby has this put on a salvage brainstorm, I think. This is a salvage um, brainstorm, also. Wait, Ruby's it? Ruby's is two K, isn't it? Oh, hmm. why is? Oh, because uh, because it's trait. No, I think this should be two K. Right. Hang on. How big is the Ruby one? It's 2k, right? So salvage brainstorms that are trait restricted cost less budget to do than salvage brainstorms that are universal. Right. Um, so the Ruby, like most salvage brainstorms are printed, they target anything. So that the same budget as search brainstorms that are trait bound. This, this is something in... Uh, maybe maybe one third of the audience watching this about this cares about this and two thirds doesn't give a crap so but basically for a reason maybe accurately bush road evaluates search to be better than salvage so uh because searching is considered to be better in budget wise uh to balance it to be the same as salvage brainstorms search usually gets trait restricted and salvage is universal this salvage brainstorm is trait bound so it is cheaper than normal I think that means it's going to be 500 power. I actually have the Nora Valkyrie up right now, the Ruby Brainstorm. It has the exact same effect as this, but the traits swapped, and she's 2,000 power. Okay, so, how about the Revenge, or the Snowball text, rather? Is the Snowball text also trait bound on the Ruby uh, Brainstorm? They're, they are line, this card is line for line, the exact same text as the Ruby Brainstorm. I see. Yeah. Including the trait binding yes. on the salvage? Yeah. Oh, well, well, okay, well, well, it shows what I know about the Ruby card pool. So I, I played that deck, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Because every card in that set was remnant trait. Okay, so what are we saying about balance? This isn't balanced? Uh, it's not balanced properly because it's underpowered. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Right, gotcha. We um, count underpow underpowering something this just as that, bad. It's still a good card. Oh yeah, it's still I would uh, I would play this as a brainstorm even if it were 500 power. What kind of range do you get brainstorms, Carl? I like I like plus in brainstorms. B for brainstorm, dude. I think that was yeah. You know what? I'm even gonna go B plus. Uh, okay. For me, because uh, I give any, I think. <laughs> Bush Road should stop printing search brainstorms because we should stop shuffling our deck so much. So much time. <laughs> Salvage brainstorms are ready to go. So that's my tip to all designers: is if you want good grace from me, uh, make them all salvage. Yeah, all the all you bushy red employees watching, take notes. We want salvage brainstorms. Okay, is this doll making? <sighs> Fetching dolls? No, I don't buy it. Yeah, probably not. I don't, I don't, um, I, there's it's a not... fairy tale doll maker that like can only search level zeros from your deck to. Uh, okay, that would make sense. Yeah. Suggest right. So if this were only grabbed like cost zeros, if this was a cost zero summoner, oh, like then a, I can imagine yeah, behind, that'd be kind of cool. Like that. But that's not the case here. So, so we give tilts to things that are um, they're not, not like flavorful, flavor. but they're not anti flavor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, alrighty, it's just a brain. Well, sometimes a card is just a card. A card is just a card. I get another Marissa. Yes. No. I don't even know if I read the Marissa. I probably didn't. Okay. You did. Uh, this is an ordinary magician Marissa. <laughs> no, you didn't. He's a human, which um, in the world where humans exist in this world, Paro. Yes, there's okay. a few of them laying around, knocking oh, about. I, when a climax is placed in your climax area, this gets 1500 power. So 6k and then 7k with the choice climax, and you're playing the choice because it combos with it. When this card attacks with the choice, uh, choose one of the following effects perform. Either salvage the event or search the event. And the event is a, a cigarette uh, counter step icon. Yeah. So it can be played on your turn or the opponent's turn. Conditionless cigarettes counter. Yeah, so I, I guess we might, we might get to that one. <laughs> um, also, problem with this is also this is supposed to have a field condition. Um, Oh, do these usually have field uh, yeah. conditions? The Goblin Slayer, Goblin Slayer has this. Like there are multiple different cards that have this. Um, it's a, it's a cool climate combo. Um, 
Like it's fun to make combos like this that grab a character relevant event. It's just it's really it's fun. This is a good design. But um when Bushy Road makes this a profile, they usually require you to have another traded character on the field. So Okay. Like, this card is still this is, that doesn't make the card better or worse. That it, it's a free condition, but this should have if you have another fantasy or whatever. Yeah, very easy fix to make. Yeah, that is easy. Um, and is this good? Uh, cigarettes, and it's counter step cigarettes. I think it's it good. attacks a seven k, so it has a decent chance to be big enough to front and then still be alive for you to have the option of using it at counter step, which is good. Yeah. I, I guess were... I wish it was bigger on offense. Right. Yes. You, you, if you wanted to make this much better, you would skew the power line even more. So that way you can make sure you have a counter step if you want it. Yeah. Like drop, the, drop it down to three K and just have it gain four K on turn. Yes. Then this thing's always killing something. Right. And oh, yep. But it's it's still fine. Yeah. Uh Hakuro, that's like her little tool. She shoots magic out of it. Works for me. Okay. Yeah, like you said, characters event characters that search events relevant to them is always kinda cute. Yeah. Next one. We got a uh, Supreme Intellect, Ron Yakumo. She has she's one zero five K and has an accelerate ability. At the beginning of your climax phase, you may Clock the top card of your deck. If you do, she gets a thousand power and a uh, following ability until end of turn. When the battle opponent becomes reversed, look it up to four cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one fantasy character from among them, reveal it to your opponent, put it into your hand, and put the rest into your waiting room. So she gains a thousand power and becomes a Minami for the turn. Uh, yeah, I like these. Yeah, um, these are all right. Not very big. I think. Yes, it is not very big, and it's kind of, it seems it's kind of deck-specific on which, it, it, this fits well into certain kinds of decks that really want this effect, and then, but a lot of the time you don't, you don't, don't even give it a second look. But it's cool to have this as an option. Um, there is a standby combo that I think you don't want, like, a lot of lanes of. So this would be like a fine second or third sure. lane in that car in that but then you're playing two color level one. And you're also playing standby, so this thing is like locked to a thousand power. Yeah, that's right. Or six thousand, I guess, right? Um Yes. I unfortunately enough. I really like this character and I don't think this card is very good. Okay. Uh flavor wise, there's nothing here really. She's she's super smart and that's like her thing. She can do math really well. Oh. I don't know how you would ever even like turn that into a way shorts thing. You have to count your deck really carefully when you go into the accelerator. Yeah, that's, turn. <laughs> that's what's going on. If you Can you forget, count to five? That, yeah, exactly. You have to count the card you're clocking to, I... to accelerate the top of deck. Oh, okay, so that's man. That's where you can get messed up. Right, of course. Uh, having played this game for so long, I feel like I've seen mistakes similar to that before. Balance wise, don't these effects? How big is the Ghislaine? Right. The I think the Ghislaine is um, six k because it has a field condition to get bigger. Um, so this effect I think does cost five hundred. So this I believe is balanced. It is correctly balanced. Oh, okay. And uh, does Ghislaine also gain power? Yeah, I think Ghislaine gets the one. Ghislaine gets the one k and reverse, right? I'm just checking just to make sure. MTI. And then you have to spell Ghislaine. Yeah, she gains a thousand power and becomes a Minami. Yep. It is definitely 500 power for that effect. So balance cool. fine. Great. Yeah, good. And I guess we could just move on to the next one. Nothing really much else to say about this card. Uh, this next card, uh, Drunkard Oni, Suika Ibuki, it's a interchange backup. So 2-1, two, 2-5 uh, two, backup with the cost extra on top. You can spend 2 stock and discard a fantasy trade character from your hand. 
to gain uh you can choose one of your opponent's characters level higher than their level and put it into stock and then take the bottom card of stock out uh so this kind of profile is printed all the time it's a good tool to give your sets um your it feels like your set is missing something your de a deck is missing something that doesn't have access to this effect but this particular like version i don't think has actually been printed before yeah like, so the the uh, stock kick anti change counters they don't nag your opponent the stock Right, they just get the but stock. You have printed those, and they were bad. Yeah, <laughs> uh, only very recently has Bushroad. I think Bushroad has actually only printed one other anti change counter that does not give the opponent extra stock, but does the whole replacement thing. Um, and it's not costed like this. It's costed like the um, more like the Rezero Amelia backup with pay one, ditch one sack one this one is pay two ditch a traded character um so for that reason it's hard to quick do quick napkin math on whether this <laughs> is budgeted correctly um i tried and i gave up uh so i'm, I'm just gonna give him benefit of doubt the designer sure it's balanced it probably looks, it looks balanced. It doesn't look too high does it uh, no so like I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of the Gilbert anti change or the Agile anti change mm -hmm. from Sao, who is also paid yeah. to ditch one a ditch a traded character, and he sends to bottom deck, which I think is better than stock kicking the card. It is better. And yeah. how much power does uh, Agile have? Oh fuck! Um, thing. Hang on, this it, is why we have should, the. It doesn't really matter in real games, but these this extra text they slap on the backups mm -hmm. costs power from the bottom left of this character. So Agil, I'm gonna take it. Oh, I can just check my on critics page. Uh, English eight choice. Let's see. Agile is twenty five also. So I, I think everything here checks out. Right, but that would if <laughs> if Agil is also twenty five. And yeah. if bottom decking is better in Bushy Road math than stock kicking, that means this is actually under spec. Okay, but consider this, and right? Be... Consider this for a sec. The Yuki Ho yeah. anti change from um, Idol Master, like original Idol Master, is also 2,500, and she just gives your opponent the stock. Okay, maybe. But maybe Bush Road just didn't. Some <laughs> I'm temp this is very dangerous to say what I'm saying, but I'm tempted to say that Bush Road has rethought how they're supposed to budget stock kicking uh anti change counters. Do you have an uncle that works at Bushy Road? Is that like Yeah, yes. Uh, uncle Patty. Uncle Paddy Wagon working at Bushy Road designing the anti change <laughs> yeah. counters. So so what are you arguing here? Do you think this card should have more power? Or that uh, it had I, no, less. I wouldn't say it has more power. I, I, I would. I, it's possible that the di the trait restriction on the ditch, maybe you'd get rid of it so you can discard like a climax or an event or something. And it. it oh, because but, bottom deck is better than stock kick. Ex you exactly. should be able to ditch anything. Correct, but you know I'm not confident, and the card as is, I think, is still good and worth playing. Okay, here, of here's what. what you do, Alex. Here's what, you, or Patty. Here's what you do. You have, um, when you use this card's backup, if you have two or more other traded characters, you may pay to ditch a card. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, that's technology you can slap on any card. <laughs> yeah. Make the math work out, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, that's like the black magic of creating cards, is you just say, mm, yes. you need to have traded characters on stage. You have to have another character on stage to use this effect. That's the But magic. yeah, I do think this is a pretty alright anti-change. Flavor wise, no, terrible. I don't. Uh, um, she's really? like, she's like also an oni, right? She's a fighter. Yes. She's like another physically very strong character. Her this powers make her look that physical. <laughs> uh, she like picks up like chunks of earth and throws it at people in the fight. She's like mm. a, introduced in the fighting games and only is in the fighting games. Mm. Like she's very specifically like a physically oriented character. Uh, and her power is like controlling density of things or like she can like make things more or less dense um i don't know stock kicking 
turning someone into mist maybe is uh, I, I kind of I, I don't really see anything here. Okay. Yeah. So terrible flavor Tilda. Terrible flavor. I don't think it's terrible. I just think there isn't any at all. It's not like, like the Marissa where it was like totally just like missed opportunity. All right, got it. Then the next one is a new character, Earth Manipulator. What does this card do, Paro? Oh, is this me? This is Earth Manipulation, Tenshi Hina Naoi. Like it looks like me. I do wear a hat with peaches on it. I've been known to do so in public. Uh, oh, look. She's going to see the defeat look of surprise on the Oni's face. Uh, when she's played on stage from hand, draw one, ditch one. Bounce one of your opponent's characters. Okay, sure. Uh, and then on attack, you may put a character from hand into waiting room. When this card attacks, you may pay the cost. Uh, she gets 2,001 soul for the turn. This is very similar to the King Bouncer from... Uh, what's it? Seven Deadly Sins. Has a different yeah. has a different bounce effect, but it does have the ditch a card mm -hmm. to gain 2,000 in a soul. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, hmm. What do you think about bouncers as a card to rate, Paro? I think that... I don't think you just throw a bouncer into every set, right? I think you have to specifically kind of... There's a the kind effect. of person who thinks that if your set has a text like this, it just gets thrown into your deck, regardless of what the rest of your deck is doing. But you're not one of those people. No. I uh, I would play... This is like medical kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, uh... Sure. I think No, I think that's right. Um, it's okay if you're that kind of person. But yeah, I think this is pretty whatever. I don't See, think there's it's any. It's a good tool to have, though. I don't think there's any flavor and, uh, in this card. So far as balance, yes, this yeah. this kind. Both these effects are on different cards. This is actually a carbon copy of um, movie set Cosima, I think. Oh, so really? It is balance. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I like to see the Konosuba cards. And uh, is it Earth manipulation to bounce a character? No way, man. Yeah, I'm actually... Mm, okay, no, I won't give the minus. That's okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Cool. <laughs> All right. We good to go with the next one? Yeah. Okay. This is a Yuka Kazami. Uh, when the card is placed on stage from hand, choose one character at the level equal to... Okay, I will read. Okay. Choose one character at level equal to or lower than your level in your hand, put it on any position on your stage, and that summoned character gets 2k power until the end of the turn. So you can cheat out for no stock another card in your hand. And when it attacks, you can pay 4 stock. If you do choose one of your fantasy characters, that character gets the following blow at the end of turn. Uh, once per turn, when damage dealt by this card is cancelled, you may deal the same damage to your opponent. Hmm. Are you familiar with any cards that have an effect like that of on cancel burn for the same amount? I think yeah, the, um, uh, Grisaya the has dragon. it. Oh, okay. Because the dragon maid burns for the amount of soul that it has, but that's not the same thing. Well, Grisaya's uh, is worded differently. It's like, it's like when this... Oh yeah, no, it's the same thing actually. When this card's damage is cancelled, you may deal that same amount of damage to your opponent. It's a okay, climax so it's combo. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Did you play with that card? Is that good? I played against it, and I probably died to it and got, like, sad. <laughs> but I, uh, I think everyone stopped playing that card when they realized it sucked. I, see. I don't think I would want to ever pay four for that effect. It seems quite expensive. I could um, just play the Musashi, right, and get, like, maybe the same effect, even. Yes. Um, I'm... Makes you think what the role of this is. Like, it is not exp as expensive as it looks because part of the stock cost is being, I guess, subsidized by the fact that it has the roach summon effect on the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I agree with you that it seems pretty prohibitive. You'd have to have some kind of, I don't know, you'd have to have some kind of synergy, I imagine, to make you want to play this instead of 
just another Musashi in that lane. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go actually with the... Yeah, I, I don't think this is good at all. I don't think you'd ever want to um, pay that cost, dude. Right. It is so prohibitive. Uh, it is repeatable. So if this managed to live somehow and you had enough resources to do it again, you could. But that seems tough. Uh, flavor, by the way, is a complete fail. Uh, this character... They're really old. They just want to be alone and take after their sunflowers. Uh, they, they're not hanging out with other people. They're not summoning other oh, guys. Wow. They're not giving other guys effects. I see. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. Um, as far as balance. Uh, uh, I don't know how you might... cost that effect. Right. Um, this might be. Cr this seem seems like actually a cost that Bushra might give this. Like, uh, okay, so you can you can assume playing a climax to your stage is equal to pay to ditch one. So I'm trying to find what the um, Grisaya one was costed at. While you do that, uh, yeah. Bushiro does print other kinds of cancel burns, like mm -hmm. cancel burn one, right? Uh, I think those costs are like maybe pay to ditch one or something, or pay one ditch one. Okay, so the um, the Grisaya one is pay one. So if we assume that the uh, if we assume a climax is equal to pay two ditch one, okay, uh, and that pay two ditch one is equal to pay three, and that this card makes you pay one, this Grisaya card, then actually this effect is uh, is balanced like perfectly. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, uh, good job. I'd like to think the Earth, Weeb, and Fire. Okay, well, uh, it seems like good instinct then, or good, good referencing. Yes, good job, Mister Weeb. Uh, here we have Feline Servant hey. Chen. Sure. Uh, uh, I'll guess. Oh, I read the last one. You so did I'll read the sure last one. <laughs> we got it's a it's a pay one bond. To the Iran. And also, it has um, on play from hand, mill two. If there's a climax among them, you may put the top card of your opponent's deck into your opponent's waiting room. If you do, choose a card in your opponent's waiting room, put it on top of his or her deck. Well, that's an interesting way to put that. Is that how that effect used to be worded? Is it still worded like that? Um, do ice I cards really My have instinct, that on it? <laughs> My instinct is that. Uh... Each player touches their own waiting room and deck. So my guess is that Busher words it to where the opponent does the stuff rather than you do it. Uh, anyways, this card's not balanced. That first effect is uh, costed at 1k, and the second effect is costed at 2k. Uh, you can look like at 1,000 power for that first effect. Yeah, you, you can That's reference the, um, the Vivid Strike Free Runner has that effect, and it's a 1k. And also the um, Megumin that... No, is it a Megumin? Yeah, it's a Megumin that bonds to Bunny Girl Union. That card has a thousand power. A thousand for the um, for this effect, and a thousand for hand bond. Pay one bond is costed at two thousand. So that would put it's that effect at zero. Pretty steeply high budget cost for something that's so worthless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. Um, I like that this is here, though. Um, that it pushes a minor theme in yellow of top decking uh, stuff on the opponent's deck, mm -hmm. uh, like the Toka and the uh, cross turn thirteen five. That's that's cool uh, to seed your color with multiple cards that do one thing. Um, I wish this card gave this power. Powerful? Is this yeah? Trolly? Yeah, the the cat is the familiar of the fox. So yeah, she. She would, uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You fight the cat and then you fight the fox on the same level, because the fox sure. is the cat's master. Good, like good. Yeah, enough, I wasn't right? thinking about. I wasn't thinking about the bond. So that's obvious. But yeah, uh, I, I like putting this. Uh, oh yeah, I, sorry, I don't know about stupid the first effect part. on trollish characters. Yeah, she's uh, kind of a little shithead. If that's what you're so, asking. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, I wish it gave power to Ran though. Because like that, that's like what that card is missing. 
Even if it was yeah, just, if it was like on turn two K, I think this card would be sick. Yeah. Um, also, but power level wise, uh, mm-hmm. the bond targets. It seems to me, okay. <laughs> uh, bond pairs in like constructed wise get a lot worse if you're not encouraged to run a lot of copies of the bond target. Uh huh. So I don't know. It, in a real in a deck that you're like building to win with. Are you going to put in four, three or four copies of this accelerator? I don't know. No, you play like two at most, I think. Right, which makes a bond uh, pretty low value because it reduces the chance that your bond target's in the waiting room if you only have two copies in your deck. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's very good even with the... I definitely don't think it's good even though it's not balanced. And someone asked me about that. Someone asked me in person, how can a card be not balanced if it's not good? Surely that means it is balanced. No, you can't just make up power lines. This is a you can't you can't just make up the rules. <laughs> What's uh, the next card? <laughs> harsh. Uh, with that, we'll go to the next card. Creator of idols, Keiki. I need to. Hani Yasushin. Keiki Hani Hani, Hani Yasushin. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Kani Yasushin. Hani Yasushin. Uh, <laughs> when it attacks, look it up to two cards at the top of your deck. Uh, and choose one from the top, put it on top of your deck, put the rest in the waiting room. Um, so she chooses her own trigger. And when it attacks also, if you have one or less other characters, mill the top card of your deck. If the milled card is a level zero character, then put it in your back stage. Um, I have tended not to like either of these effects. Um, putting them on the same card is cute. Um, I think this exists, right? Uh, I wouldn't be not surprised. That, not that that's a problem. Just like I think this does exist somewhere. I think um, it's Bush Road learned that the second summon effect is only even close to playable unless if you you have to pair it with some the top of your deck for it to be remotely close to getting into the deck so that makes sense that it exists um it's pro- and i think it's balanced i think each of these effects are worth 1k mm-hmm. yep that sounds right to me uh power level wise, i think this is bad um the the fact that the trigger whew, the trigger set up I guess it would make sense in like a standby deck or something, but uh the top deck manipulation I feel like on this level zero would be a lot more valuable if it was a done main phase, so you have like things to do with that information. Here you're just forced to attack with it. So you have to attack with this crappy level zero in like the mid game for it to have any utility as a card, which means it's a utility card that doesn't have any usefulness past level zero. Mm-hmm. So I give it a D. But so I don't like these effects. Maybe oops, I didn't I did not mean to give that card two pluses. I don't think these are very good. I do think that at least this one like it scales as the game goes on. I think that's a big issue with this kind of profile. Is that like after, you know, after like very early game, and this is the pre, is it? Yeah, this is the pre buff version of this effect. So they, Bushy Road at some point realized that these cards are unplayable, and they changed it so that you can spawn the character as long as you have no back row at all. So you can like actually try field with these and still spawn a character. Yeah, so it, it exists in Princess Connect for sure, and in a few other sets I don't remember. Uh, no, what is it? Sword Art, I think, also has this. Like, the new Sword Art uh, Anniversary 10th set? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the pre-buff version of that effect, which means you cannot try field with this. The first effect, though, if you are if playing standby, I think is, like, pretty good. Because you can still be digging for, like, your triggers late game. Or even just trying to, like, guarantee that you're triggering clean late game in any other build. Yeah. Uh... I think it's a little bit better than D, but like not not tremendously. Uh, I wish that it had the updated spawn text. 
f- flavor wise, it's pretty good. She's like a creator god. You know, she's making guys out of clay. So, you know, spawning a dude, kind of making a dude out of clay. Uh, right. Fun fact this character is made of shit. Maybe that's maybe that's the flavor, Patty Wagon. Um, she's based off of a Shinto god, which was created after another, out of another Shinto god's feces. Uh, so that's like that's your fun. You get to take home that fact. Tell your family at Thanksgiving. Uh, flavor's good. Got it. Sushi. <laughs> uh, next one. This is me. Is this a is a wolf cat. No, Wolf Tengu Momiji Inubashi. Uh, you cannot play event cards or backup from your hand. Ooh, he bolded the quotation marks. Tisk tisk tisk. Uh, when this card is placed on stage from hand, mill two. This card gets a thousand power for each character milled. Uh, do you have anything to say about this? I'm struggling to think uh, of. This seems like for making for making a card that people would want to play. Like I think that this would want to be this would be better as a card if it didn't even have the second ability, which was to four K. Yeah, I, so I agree. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah, I'll say C minus. No, I think this card's ass. I hate, I hate, hate, hate um, forced mill cards. Because sometimes it's like the only card in your hand yep. that you can play, and it's like, wow, yep. I really don't want to. I don't want to touch my deck at all right now. You know, I actually haven't played. Never mind. I play cigarettes all the time. Never mind. You're right. Forced mill is bad. Balance, it's fine. Flavor, there's nothing. What a what a boring card, pack filler. Gotta have it. I get the hag, Yukari Yakumo. This is a yokai. Yes. It's a level one. Uh, and it's an amagi, a level one amagi. When you play a climax, you can pay one stock if you do check four t- cards, choose up to one level one or higher card from among them, add it to hand, mill the rest. It's and as a second card. effect of uh, rest this card, choose another opponent's character, send it to memory, return it to stage. You say it's Bofuri? Yeah, Bofuri has this exact card. Yes, uh, I, it does. With the difference that I think the Bofuri is 3,000 power and this one is 2,000. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Why did we not do that properly? I'm gonna guess a, a typing mistake happens. And uh, but as a card, did you play against the Buffy card? Yes, uh, I used to. Fun fact: I used to play almost exclusively Konosuba, and I did so for a year. Uh, I played the Obero combo, and this card. <laughs> if you play this card versus Obero, you win the game. It's that simple. Yeah, it it seems it hoses certain strategies yes. so hard. Yes, so um, having access to it every turn, so you're not like wasting a slot on your board, like in your yeah. front row. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it pluses. Really it's a it's an Amagi. I think this card yes. was really good in Bofuri, and I think it's like just pretty good. I don't know if it's like specifically relevant against anything right now. Mm-hmm. At the time of the the time of the set being yeah. made, right? This kind of card, though, if if it happened that in a meta game this set or like very strong otherwise this is the kind of card that would like warp a meta like a, like it would shut out certain decks from the meta if this deck were popular yeah um, which is it's cool to have some cards like that in your set i'm i'm a fan um design wise this is like anti synergy with the spawner that we saw two cards ago because it's not a level zero, so you can't summon your Amagi off your level zero spawner, which would normally be one of your premium spawn targets. Mm. So, this true. Make, this, the existence of this card actually makes that other card worse. Um, yeah. Flavor. Uh, is this? Yeah, sure. She, no, she, she can. Out? She can make like portals. You can say, like, you're sending the guy through a portal and bringing him back. That sounds good to me. Yeah, I like that. This is you. Is it? Or is this me? This is me. 
That is me. That what a coincidence. <laughs> you got some nice hair. So fun fact, this is Bridge Guardian Parsi Mizuhashi. This is where Paru comes from. This is the origin you know of what? Paru. I I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to look like uh, <laughs> a dummy, but I did think of a your name when I read this card, yeah. so I'm glad. The character's name in, the, in games is written as Parusi, like Parusi. So, that's where I took Paru okay. from. Then what do you do, Paru? Uh, when this card becomes reversed in battle, clock the top card of your deck and rest this card. I see, so you can't die, Paru. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. F- c- so cursed. Is- cursed to live forever. Um, that sounds like flavor. Like th- this is this is kind of the ideal effect to put on nice looking art of some card in some character in your anime or whatever that uh, revives itself as like it's so easy to put it on. It's a great effect. It's so flavorful, and then nobody will put it in any deck. So you know what's really unfortunate is there's a literal zombie character later on who did not get this effect. Uh, there is a literal no. character who can who is a zombie who cannot die who comes back every time you kill them who did not mm. get this effect <laughs> this character has nothing to do with this sort of ability oh she's sad. she's like a jealousy demon she's just she's just pissed off and jealous all the time i see um, that's too bad strength awful card <laughs> yeah this is terrible um Bushy still prints this effect in modern sets, even though it's so bad. But they yeah. tack it on to like obscene power gains now. So, like, I'm trying to think of one. Even, I know you're even right. when they make it like a 12k cross turn, it's still not worth putting in a deck. Yeah, because of the you know one out of two games where your opponent mm-hmm. hits 12k at level two, and you take yeah. the clock, you're like, fuck. I wish I just played a yes. real card in that lane. Um. I really enjoyed this archetype in Madoka when I very first started playing. Like, my first couple locals, I had a card like this, and I thought it was Yeah, I mean, card was probably good 10 years ago, right? Yeah. (laughs) It probably wasn't even good then. Next is a Dongo Manufacturer Ringo. Um, It's a level 0 on play, pay 2, bounce one of your opponent's characters back to their hand. And also on play, pay one, ditch one, drop salvage, and assign 1,000 power to one of your other fantasy characters. This looks like a Hollow Life card. This is a Hollow Life card. It's a good Hollow Life card that um, yeah. I think is played in like formats where it's needed. So I think yeah. this card is all right. It's like a decent enough drop salvage. You know, it's not you know blow yep. you away, but like you can totally play like one to two of this in any deck and not feel terrible about it. Mm-hmm. Flavor's just not um, there. It's just a card. Sure. I get really annoyed by these effects because um, they make me tank about sequencing playing something worth pumping first and then playing the drop salvage. So. Oh, yeah. That's that's just me. Oh! Um, oh, never mind. Actually, competent players don't get worried about this kind of thing. So, I... I think it's kind of wild that like they haven't made one of these that can pump the, pump itself yet because I don't even think that would be like, broken or anything. Right. You you would think that it, it wouldn't be. It's going to happen eventually. It's just going to say if all of your characters are trait, you may choose a trait yes, and right. give it power. Yep. <laughs> or if you have two or more other fantasy characters. All right. <laughs> uh, we got springtime. Yeah. Lily White. Climax combo. When your two soul is placed in the climax area, and she's in the front row, you may clock the top card of your deck. If you do, look it up to two cards on the top of your deck. Choose up to two cost zero or lower characters from among them. Put them on separate positions of the stage, and put the rest into waiting room. Uh, I, I think Konosuba has that first effect, or I guess that only effect. But Konosuba's yep. is um. This effect is costed at 1k, and this card is only 1500 power. Because uh, cause yeah, I think of, that this card is under yeah. is yeah, it's not a, balanced properly. It's probably underpowered. Yeah, it's it's underpowered by 500. I had to look up this effect. Um, Haro oh, yeah. let me look at some of these cards in advance, and because this card read to me as one of the worst climax combos I've ever read. 
and I was surprised that it already existed and was printed multiple times. Oh, um, apart from Konosuba, a, what was this in? This is in To Love Ru on a Momo, Kiznaiver on a Hisomu, and <laughs> oh, no. uh, Rent a Girlfriend on a Cheese. Oh, God, this is in Rent a Girlfriend? That new? Apparently. Wow. Um, but on the Kiznaiver card, the Hisomu helpfully has no other text. So oh, we know he's just 2K? how much this effect is supposed to be budgeted. And this effect is worth 500 power on the Hisomo. Wait, that's weird. Because it's costed at 1,000 power on the Cosima. Is this Hisomu work? Wait, that wouldn't matter. What's so weird? Back row runner is oh. worth 1,000. I'll grab it real quick. Back row runner, K1 run to back row, I think is worth 15. Is it? Is Aaron 15? Aaron is 15. Uh, oh shit, you're right. My whole life is a lie, dude. And also I just lied about the cause never he someone. He someone has one of the texts, but it's a it's a very it's a power gain effect that has to be worth five hundred. So. Oh, okay. So we know that this should be only five hundred. We know that this should be worth five hundred in budget. So this terrible card gets to be twenty five hundred power. Ooh, power. Okay. Wow, so um it might be able to actually kill something on offense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is just awful. You know, it's unfortunate. You um, can't it's even. It's cool that it can summon cost zeros, but that's not worth it. Right? If only you could spawn the Minami and then use it. Oh, yeah. Like if this was on the same climax or something? Well, no, like the, you know, the Minami accelerator. Oh, the accelerator. Accelerator. Unfortunately, the timing yeah, yeah. doesn't work out. That and then not work out. Springtime. She kind of just. Shows up during like the start of spring and fires bullets randomly at everything. So she is kind of just like a she's a loose cannon, you know. She just kind of throws okay. shit at people. So I, I guess I could kind of see this work. And I'm okay with uh. There's there's a lot of like little thing like spring a level zero climax combo or I don't know. I'm okay with it. Yeah, that's fine with me. I agree. Nice. Uh, next is another yokai, unidentifiable girl, Nui Hoju. Uh, level 1, during your turn, this gets 2k power, so it's 6,000. And when a climax is played, when, when you play a climax, this gets on reverse stock charge from the top of your deck. These cards are good. I love these cards, and this one's big enough to kill things. It is big enough. It would be 6 or 7k, depending on the climax you play. Yeah. Which is a good number. Um hopefully. Like there's no flavor like, in this card. This is ob the obvious like deck design principles for this kind of card, but you wanna you'd like to pair it with other level ones that don't rely on reverses, and the level one combo we already saw doesn't rely on a reverse. That's good um synergy. Yeah, this is a good like second level one to yes. play alongside the Marissa. Um uh got nothing else to say. Nice. Got duplication, Suika Ibuki. During your turn, if you have another fantasy character, this card gets plus fifteen hundred power. Uh when she's placed on stage from hand, you may pay the cost. If you do, search for up to one of this card, put it on any position of your stage, and shuffle your deck. I've never uh, played with this kind of thing, but they don't seem <coughs> Doesn't <laughs> I have played this profile okay. in Cinderella Girls before? Oh yeah, as a level as a as my plusing zero of choice. Ah, zero. Is that better or worse than level one? I think it's better than level one because I'm okay with running. I I'm okay with running like bad plusing zeros that get me the plus. Mm. I don't really want to play like a vanilla. Sure. At level a one. raw plus at zero is more valuable than a raw plus at yeah, one. Yeah, because at, at level one, my like strategy in most decks is going to be that you want to like, you know, drop your level one combo and go from there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is just uh, this is like this like uses up two lanes, at least. Yeah. So that's like less places for you to get your combo at. Now, there is like a case for playing this card because there is a good level 2 Stock Soul combo in this set. 
that we will probably have words about later on. Um, so, like, you could play this as, like, your quote-unquote level 1 combo as you prepare to play the level 2 combo. Mm. But... Okay. I think that's, like, the only use fi- use case for this card. Um... So, give, well, give how it, would you rate this card, I give, then? I give it, like, a C. Because, like, it's... It might be okay. Sure. It in, it in could play a role situation. in a certain kind of deck, sure. Uh, I assume this is flavorful from the name of this card. Yeah, so she... She can she can manipulate like densities of things, which includes being able to make a bunch of small clones of her. Like she can split herself up into smaller ones. Sure. That if as long as like the they add up to the same kind of thing, so it's fine that way. And then balance. Both of these effects seem fine to me. I yeah, know that the first effect, effect is only five hundred. Um, yeah, the second effect is five hundred. The first effect is really weird to try to calculate it out um but yeah that is also balanced at my 500 so that's a good job nice next um is this the buddha this is a tower this is a taoist actually okay got it so got understood so this is not sacrilegious religious hermit (laughs) uh Whatever. Toyo Satsu Toyo Satsu Mimi no Miko. Sure. Uh when this is placed on stage from hand, uh get big. Plus five hundred times the number of your fantasy characters. Um the last time I played with this kind of card was post banned ban list Japanese fate because you couldn't run your level one Sakura bar combo anymore uh in that uh, post ban because you had no way to make it big enough because your Shiro was banned. Mm-hmm. Um, so you played this alongside the clock puncher to clock punt things. So I have played this profile one time in like a decade. So <laughs> I played this in Gurren Lagan because I played eight shot and there were no other yellow level ones. Oh yeah, that. I mean, that's sure. If you if your set is small enough. Uh, in choices, then you can start looking at this card. What does that mean? D minus. I, I think I think this card's ass. I don't think you'd ever play it in like any modern set, especially okay. not when you have the new A or the um, the run that are both like totally fine. I'll say F plus because I actually. Uh, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna average it out back to F, just to make sure that. You know, we don't I straight can't too give far. an F to a card <laughs> that I have actually played before. Oh I can I can absolutely give an F to a card that I have played before. <laughs> Flavor wise, this is disappointing. This is like one of the this is one of like the biggest characters in the series, and she's been reduced really? to this. Yes, I see. All of like the religious faction leaders are treated as like very important characters, and this is like basically a vanilla. That would set up. That would disappoint some people. I'm. Yeah. Out. Oops. Okay. Um. And oh my god, what am I doing? And then uh, I'm gonna give balance. Yeah, it's fine. It's a vanilla like drop assassin. Very well balanced card. That one. <laughs> uh, what's up next, part? We got Hell's Gatekeeper Kutaka Niwatari. Uh, she's a she's a chicken lady. All of your other characters gain a thousand power, non trait restricted. And she is a an act, pay one, ditch one, rest, drop salvage. So it's a I like this drop salvage. A lot. It's a drop salvage <laughs> you can use every turn. And it's global 1,000. I love backgrounds like this. Um, the, I think the balance is all over the place. Uh, partly because... I, I don't know if it intentionally so. Uh, the, the global 1k to anything non-trade is very weird. Oh yeah, Bushiro I'm does not like those. Intended. Yeah, yeah. It, it costs an obscene amount of power to give global 1k that isn't trait restricted. Well, it uh, costs an obscene amount of power to give global 500 that isn't trait restricted. Yes. Yes, exactly. This, um, according to Bushy Math, the first effect alone would be minus 6,000. Holy fuck. Uh, so, already, I'm going to say that this is not balanced. Yeah. As is. But, 
that doesn't actually really change the power level of the card, really. I, um, I really, I think this effect is good. It's like side grade Rico, and I know that mm. um, from Sunshine and Bush Road has been printing more and more cool level two back rows that give you like hand and resource manipulation. I really like that trend from Bush Road, and this card follows up on that trend. And um, oh, I like it. Uh, how good is it? You're saying C plus? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd play like you could easily play like one to two copies of this in like any list that was playing yellow, especially with the Yugi level three, the Yugi early play. She's sitting at fourteen five now, and uh, I mean, you're playing a stock charger in your deck, right? If you're playing yellow, sure. you can play the new A, so the stock isn't an issue for you. You can actually just keep using this to like recycle the, the Yugi, which like gives the deck, which would like give the deck like an identity. I was like, oh shit, I'm playing against Yellow Toho, the deck that spits out 14-5, no backups for the entirety of level 2. I think it's neat. Yeah. I don't think there's yeah. any flavor to this card, though. Which is fine. The character's like, not really even a character. Sure. Um, I, one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, like, for anyone looking to try to rebalance this card... Probably you'd make the first effect trait bound. Right. So then that would be worth minus 2,000 power on budget. And then you'd probably remove the trait binding on the second effect. Um, yeah. Okay. And that lets you compare this to the Azure Lane Boise, which was recently released, that has this effect without the trait binding, and that's minus 500 on that. Oh, like so repeatable drop salvage? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like I said, Bushiro has been printing more of these effects, and that's a really cool uh, design trend, I think. But that that's how you'd probably budget this one if you wanted to redo it. Okay, And now sure. we get to the event. Uh, yeah. Mini Hakero. It's counterstep cigarettes, so I'll read what that is. Put the Mill the top two cards of your deck. Uh, salvage a level X or lower fantasy character from your waiting room, where X is equal to the total level of the uh, cards that you milled with it. Uh, this is not balanced. Nope. <laughs> I it's... don't think it's... Um... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I was just going to say, it would be balanced if it didn't have the counter symbol on it. But uh, it does have the counter symbol on it, which means that you have to slap right. some kind of other restriction onto the card. Right, which is, it's not a difficult fix and doesn't really change our evaluation of how good the card is. Uh, it'd be easy to just put if you have a fantasy character on the field. If you want to be really mean, <laughs> the, you could put the trait condition if you have a human on the field. And I think that would be oh yeah, uh, maybe interesting. Uh, yeah, so you either have to of those are fine. You have to have the Marissa. That might be an interesting... If you wanted to make the this card more deck-specific and only for the Marissa deck, then you could require it to have the a human on field. Um, you could also... Um, sorry, I was just saying, you could also have it specifically required that Marissa and then even have like an extra effect on it, like pump like a thousand yeah. power or something in addition yeah. to the... to the... Um, what is it? The cigarettes effect. I like counterstep uh, deck manipulation. Yes. Um, and I think, like, I even have considered putting events like this counterstep mill into decks that have no way to fetch it, just because I think that effect is valuable. Well, a lot I think of it's so much that. better if you can reliably get it to hand. A lot of set one Quinn decks even did that, right? They just would like throw in three to four copies of the uh, unsearchable. Uh, torch event. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, these are pretty good. Uh, yeah, I think it's. I am likely to overvalue it. Oh, I'm happy to see you also putting it in the B area. Uh, yeah, I, I, like I like these too, especially when it's like a card that you can be playing every turn. These also get, uh, make your level one combo a lot more consistent because you can kind of think of them as True. being like extra copies of your level one combo. Like, if you draw these in Mulligan, you can even, like, hold them. 
and just like try to use them as extra copies of your level one while milling through yeah. your deck. Yeah. Flavor wise, uh, not really. It's like a it's like a thing that shoots lasers. It, that's pretty whatever. Uh, our final card in yellow. Actually, is that correct? Is this our final card in yellow? Or is this the set? Um, is this the color? No, never mind. We have three climaxes after that. Yeah, okay. This is the final card in yellow. Uh, all of your characters get the following ability until end of turn. Um, cancel burn one. It's the 3-3 three, three event gives everyone a cancel burn one. Uh, this event is in Bofuri also. It's in Bofuri, it's in Cinderella Girls. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've never played with this. Um, does this go in the same deck as the Toka-Marissa combo with the shot? How much stock is playing... How much stock is that? To play I this and the Marissa? Because the Marissa is be paid for, right? main. Oh, God. No, wait, hold on. No, I'm thinking about a different card entirely. <laughs> okay. The Marissa is two stock to play it, and then you it's on reverse. Pay four. So Marissa alone requires you to have three stock if you play no other level threes, right? Mm -hmm. Main phase. Six stock for both. Is what you're sure. saying? Yeah, six stock for both, and maybe eight stock if you want to throw in a Musashi burn. Hmm. And this is a neg one, so it eats it goes against like the Marissa's uh discard cost. Yeah, Marissa ditch three uh Yeah, I don't know. I um, think I would rather I just play these events. I would rather just play this card along like Raw Musashi, I think. Like that's what Bofuri okay. does. They just play um or that's what some people would do. They would just play the the one stock Musashis. And then load them up with uh, this event. Like two to three copies of this. Or not two to three. One to Was two copies good? of this. Uh, it would kill you. <laughs> okay, sounds good. The rest of the deck was oh, like a mess of two souls and shenanigans. But like, if they actually did this, you probably died most of the time. It's, it's like really conditional that this like works. This is the Dollmaker character? This Alice? is the Dollmaker character. What's her name? Yeah, this is the Dollmaker. I don't really see anything does, here. Does she go like, hard? No? Okay. Not really, man. She just like kind of hangs out and like drinks tea. Makes dolls. Balance. Cool. It's literally an existing card. So we know Bushy Road would approve. Alright, so now on to shot. Yeah. Uh, this climax is S strength. <laughs> Yeah, we we just got the climaxes for yellow, and that is uh that is it for yellow. Okay. Yeah, we'll see you guys uh, again in green. Interesting, unless you have something. We're gonna to say. get that for later, but this is an interesting decision on climax spread. I think um, this feel this decision on climax spread mm -hmm. is going to be repeated for most of the other colors. In the, what I mean by that is, it's not uh like eight shots mm -hmm. or eight wins. Instead, there's like very like, uh, I don't know, 2015 Bushy Road. Uh, 2015. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back when you would have actual sets printed with Climax Linus like this on the regular, mm -hmm. which um, I don't know, I found, I found cute. I liked it, actually. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is more interesting no, th there's a good point to that. It is more interesting than just saying choice is the good yellow trigger. All of my yellow climaxes are choice. Which I think is like fine. Uh, like right. I think that is fine to like design your cards like that. But it is more interesting yeah. to be like, wow, this card's pretty good, but eh, it's on a shot. I don't know. Yes. Okay. See you guys in green. <laughs>